What do I think of Ridley Scott's new Napoleon movie? Well, I'm going to go into all the details for you and tell you if it's worth a watch or not. But first, welcome to the Adam Kiss Show. Very excited to have you here. And before we go any further, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty of great content coming your way. And definitely like and share this video and give me a comment below what other videos you'd like me to do. All right, without further ado, let's dive right into Napoleon. Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. All right, let's get right into it. So Napoleon, the movie directed by Ridley Scott, uh, it's the new movie that was released recently. It's Ridley Scott's uh, most recent film. Uh, and, and before we go any further, let's just talk about Ridley Scott for a second, because the man is an absolute legend. I'm definitely a big fan of his work. Uh, he's done so many incredible movies like Blade Runner, Gladiator. Uh, the list goes on and on. He's done so many great things over the years. Some people recently haven't been as much a fan of his, his newer work as opposed to his older work. But I think that honestly, let's just take a moment to give a tribute to the man. He's about 85 years old or so, I believe, and he's still going strong. He does way more movies than a lot of way younger directors. Um, I mean, just in the past five years alone, he's done how many movies? I mean, he's done at least three movies, I would say, which is an incredible feat for a lot of filmmakers who take three or four years for a movie, typically. And another interesting fact about Ridley Scott is that he directed his first feature film when he was about 40 years old, so he kind of got a little bit of a late start. He was a commercial director before that, but in terms of his first narrative feature, he was about 40 years old, and that was a, a movie called The Duelists, and that was also set during a similar uh, era to the, the Napoleonic era, so it's interesting that he now decided to do this Napoleon film. It's also interesting to me that an Englishman decided to do a Napoleon film, when uh, Napoleon was the biggest enemy of the British in history. Uh, so those are just some interesting tidbits. Uh, now, if you've seen any, any other reviews of this movie, you'll see that a lot of them are kind of negative. A lot of them feel that it hasn't lived up to its potential. Uh, and I feel that, you know, while I, I respect those reviews and everything and what they have to say, I think that we should, in the first place, give this man credit uh, for what he's doing, because not a lot of people make historical movies like this, historical epics, and also, not a lot of people make films that aren't completely using CGI. Like, for a lot of the battle scenes here, sure, there was some CGI and fake things, but I think there was also a lot of extras, a lot of things actually happening. So, all credit where credit's due, I think that's an amazing achievement. I think that's so important in today's day and age of cinema. Honestly, I liked the movie. I thought it was a great accomplishment. Uh, one thing is that the movie could probably easily have been called Napoleon and Josephine, it's uh, really kind of divided between uh, those two characters as opposed to just focusing on Napoleon. Uh, another interesting thing that I would have maybe liked to see would have been more on Napoleon's younger years, more on his rise to power, um, and more showing his kind of charisma, ambition. It definitely kind of takes a little bit of the more negative view, uh, showing a lot of the darker moments, and showing probably a lot more intimate moments um, as opposed to a lot more battle moments that perhaps people would have been expecting to see. Uh, I mean, I know that the, the subject of Napoleon is a great subject for a movie. It's very hard to fit into any typical movie length. Um, I know that Ridley Scott mentioned that there's going to be a four-hour or so version that's going to be released on streaming, which is probably closer to what his actual vision for the film is. So obviously, uh, excited to see how that is different. Uh, but in the meantime, again, I'm, I'm a fan of it. I think he did a great job. Uh, I think it doesn't deserve a lot of the criticism he got. Again, he's definitely a very ambitious uh, director. He definitely likes to really do things. I mean, Gladiator is definitely one of the, the great mo epic movies of a historical genre. And while I wouldn't say this is one of his greatest films, I probably wouldn't name it as one of my, my favorite of his films. It's definitely a solid film. I definitely don't think it deserves a lot of the criticism it gets. The interesting thing is that Stanley Kubrick originally wanted to do a movie on Napoleon. Um, it was something that he was very much planning, very excited to do, and it didn't end up happening. And because it fell through, he still ended up making a period picture after that shot in a similar time period, and that was Barry Lyndon. Uh, so that was kind of his, that was in place of his Napoleon movie. And a lot of great filmmakers have wanted to do a movie on Napoleon. It just, um, it ends up being a very tricky subject because of how big the scope of it is. And uh, you got to admire Ridley Scott for tackling that, tackling this huge project, tackling this this huge subject of Napoleon. I mean, 
He's absolutely an incredible historical figure. He really changed uh, history, changed the world, changed the history of Europe and the world with the Napoleonic Code, with uh, all kinds of things. I mean, he came uh, at the end of the French Revolution and then he kind of set up really the modern era in many ways. In my personal preference, I would have liked to see a Napoleon more in the younger years. Um, or, or I think that this movie could have gone two ways, either show the younger years or the older years, you know, with Waterloo and, and all of that and, and all those failures at the end, the invasion of Russia, all of that. I just think it's such a mammoth task to do one single movie about it. So maybe that'll change in the four hour version. But again, uh, I, I'm a fan of the movie. I think he did a great job. I think that he deserves credit for doing this kind of movie in the age of so many uh, Marvel and superhero movies. It's definitely not easy to make these kind of movies. Uh, Ridley Scott definitely is the champion of making, you know, these kind of important movies that have a lot of depth. And I think that's so important in our age, especially the fact that he's able to work with such high budgets and, and make movies like that. So again, I'm cheering him on. And uh, that, that's all I have to say about Napoleon. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And definitely follow me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, uh, all the social media platforms. Give the channel a subscribe, share, like, and give a comment below what other videos you'd like me to do. That's all, folks.